quick, slow, deep, 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 de
dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping eating drinking dancing but not waving Petro rock sleeping
C'était Adam Beyer, mesdames et messieurs, du bruit pour lui C'était magnifique, merci beaucoup à vous. Le son n'est pas fini, puisque Timon reprend les platines. Du bruit pour lui Thank you so much for, for tonight. Um, how does it feel to play in an antique theater, 2,000-year-old two, antique theater? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me, and uh, it was a pleasure. Um, uh, it feels great, man. Like It's always nice. I, I mean, that's what I love with those circles, uh, circle videos, the, to, to put music to a scenery like this, and modern music, you know, electronic yeah. music, and it fits so well. It's incredible. I mean, it's an incredible feeling. It's not so... I mean, it happens, but it's not that often you get the chance to play uh, spectacular venues like this, so... And uh, did, did it change, for example, when you play in a club or a festival or tonight, did it change something for you? Um, I mean, I tried to do what I always do. I, wanna, I wanted it to be as authentic as possible. Maybe I played a little bit more hectic than I usually do because I had around 90 minutes and there was so much new stuff I wanted to squeeze in. So I played really fast, but I think people appreciate also, you know, like, uh, because that's that's how techno used to be played, yeah, you know, like fast paced mixing. <laughs> and um, I was struggling a little bit at start because there was a bit of a delay a in the monitor, delay. but then uh, that, then we managed to sort it out. And that's also part of the game, you know, then I had to mix without the, without the headphones and try to uh, adjust it and stuff, which is it's fun, man. Like, I mean, I come from the vinyl days, so that's what we were doing constantly yeah. back back in the days, you know, so. And of course, you did more than well. Oh, <laughs> and, thank you very much. I'm happy and, to and hear did that. You, did you see the, 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 the lights with the people with the, the glasses? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and they did it on the new drum code hit as well. So, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's the first time I, I see that. And, and what, to what, be honest, what? I thought it was planned, maybe. No, man. No, no, no. no, 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 no. They all just did it. I, I told my <laughs> I light engineer. I was like, engineer. what a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, and I told my light engineer, OK, I don't need you anymore. Now we, <laughs> we have a good yeah, light show. Should, yeah. Yeah, it's a good trick. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I wanted to ask you... Uh, no, first I will ask some questions from the online audience. And this one is really interesting from Graciela. Um, yeah, so you do a, a lot of things. You are an artist, but also a label manager. You also run, uh, like, you, you founded, uh, like, a festival, drum code festival, and also have a radio and so much things going on. And so the question from Graciela is, would you consider opening your own techno school? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, I mean, yeah, why not? We, we actually have been talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> not techno school, but I've, I'm quite interested in maybe at some point giving back because I started out as a DJ very early. I was all, uh, already at, when I was 11. And back then there was a house in Stockholm where I lived where you could go and practice. And then there was a DJ school. And it did a lot for me because I, I got a few contacts. I got my first gigs through it. And those older guys that have been in the game for a long time, I was looking up to them. And I think you can do like a really nice thing for young people, you know, yeah. like also because there's a lot of guys like and girls, obviously, who are maybe in trouble or whatever, or they're searching for the identity in that age. And to, to have something like a strong hobby like DJing, I think it's it's a really good thing, you know. So that, I, I mean, it would be, be a beautiful thing to be part of. We've been talking about it, maybe to even because I live in Ibiza now, 
maybe even to start something in Ibiza, but I don't know. Like it's 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 definitely something I will consider. Yeah. Great. And and this is leading me to another question, as you said. Uh, so question from Jacopo Sivori. What can you recommend to someone that is full of love and passion for the music, but that is but that is constantly demotivated because no one seems to support him to let him try believing more in his, himself? Difficult. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's definitely difficult times because there's a lot of DJs out there. So. I would say, you know, that, I mean, the only thing, and it's, it might sound like a cliche, but, but that's really the reality. You just got to stand by your beliefs and your sound and, and keep, keep getting out there, you know, and, and learning more and more and practicing. And, and if you're producing music, that's always going to be um, an important thing as well to, to keep perfecting your art and producing music to get your name out there. And, But then it's also about connections, you know, going out, meeting people, you know. It's it's a hard balance. It's a, it's it's not easy. I mean, for me, it's been like a natural progression throughout my life. But I, I mean, I had my first record out '93 and was sending faxes and demos on on cassette tapes. Oh, yeah. which, I mean, the kids don't even know those things these days. It was a whole different scene and and time. But yeah, you know, just just it's a struggle. But just keep keep fighting man that's that's all you can do yeah and now it's even more diff uh, maybe i can imagine that it's more even more difficult because now you don't send cassettes or something like this you just send music through the internet so i imagine as a label manager one of the biggest uh, label drum code uh, you receive tons of uh, songs how do you uh, select the artists you want to work with uh, i mean these days because we've we've gotten quite big now and a lot of people wants to want to be part of it because it's it seems it seems like uh i think people view drum as a stepping stone into getting gigs into getting you know yeah of course uh usually i mean it's, it's a process of me playing someone's music then they usually come and hit me up and say look here's a demo and then i get to know them slowly we might talk over one two years sometimes Uh, especially if there's someone new, I want to see what they're about because it's also now like the parties, we hang out, like there's a whole family involved. So it's not just like signing something and um, so if, some, if someone new comes, that's usually the process, like <clears throat> it's quite slow. I'm quite slow because there's a lot of releases, we have a lot of artists. I also look at does this artist sound original or is he already sounding like someone I have on the label because a lot of things today are sounding similar and I try to have a little bit of orig originality between my artists even though it's one sound it's still like okay he sounds a bit more like that he sounds a bit more like that and then sometimes I get a really good demo but you know I'm like this really sounds like Leighton Jordani or Enrico Sagliano and then it doesn't make sense for me to sign it, you know, because I already have one Enrico yeah. Sagliano. Um, so that's a little bit the process in my head. And then obviously like older artists um, that has an history, like for example, I'm going to release a record with Thomas Schumacher later this year or Maceo Plex is coming in with another release. It's different, you know, because they're yeah, bringing course. history, they're bringing credibility, they're bringing uh, something You know, I'm a fan, so then, then, then obviously, it's a little bit different. But yeah, yeah I imagine. And uh, a few weeks ago, you had your second edition of Drum Cut Festival. How, how did it go? Man, it was amazing. I mean, first of all, we were so lucky with the weather, just like today. Um, it's been like raining in in Holland since Awakenings. Awakenings was great, and then I haven't been there. And then when I came back for the Drum Cut Festival, it was sunny again, incredible. So. I mean, it was really hot, but yeah, no, it's for me, like having my own festival, it's a little bit surreal. Like, I like it a lot, obviously, but it's also like, I don't want it to be about me. It's this, the festival, it's about all the artists yeah, and the crowd and, and the connection, you know? I don't want to take too much space and like have the lights on me when it comes to that, because already to do like a, a festival that's based on a label i don't think anyone has done such a big one yeah. in the past yeah, yeah, that's what and it's a scary thing you know so uh, i'm just blessed that we have the following and following we have and, and our fans are, are literally the best in the world for me because it's so much positivity and i think techno can be such a uniting uniting positive thing and that's what we're showing with the festival and, and with our music 
it's crazy that you you still have time to handle uh, so much things. Well, you know, to be fair, we're working with Awakenings for Holland, and yeah, I have a great team as well in London. My office, my my guys in the office, my manager, so they do a lot. I mean, obviously, I'm involved, but uh, without my team and and the guys in Holland, I would be nothing. You know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's a big operation. And now talking about your art, artist career, I, I heard that you were uh, doing a studio in your home in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. uh, is it done yet? No, it's not done. It's still, Ibiza is very slow. I'm still, I'm still in process of some legal stuff around the house um, to get things finalized because uh, I'm the second owner of this house, so it takes some time. Uh, but there is a plan to build the studio eventually. Yeah, I want my, I want, I want to create kind of a hub for for all the new artists to come and work and hang out and you know, kind of like a, a techno finca. Okay, so yeah, it would look like. A How, how would it look like? Not, not like a small studio, it would be kind of a home for... Um, we'll for see. You. I think, it, yeah, like a mid-sized studio. I don't like a studio to be too big. I like it when it's like, it's like quite compact, but big enough for a few people to be inside, obviously, yeah. Cool. I'm really looking forward yeah. to see how it... <laughs> yeah, I want to get back into producing, you yeah. know. I, uh, there's, I had a lot of output when I was younger and Something that really gives me pleasure now is, is when I, I've been doing a lot of collabs lately and I'm a lot in Reason and the Cubase and stuff on my on my laptop. I mean, I know all the dubs, I know all my equipment and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to get back into actually producing more again because I think the value of creating something like for fun, not just for for business, it's, it's, it's something I'm missing a lot, you know? There's been a lot of focus on the DJing and and the brand and the building and everything and you know producing is is, is good for the soul i think yeah of course yeah. um just one last question from matthias from the online audience sorry guys if i don't ask your question i can't <laughs> <laughs> ask all questions um uh, matthias so told uh, what what is your greatest memory as a music performer it's difficult my greatest memory as a music performer uh, probably when I came home from school one day when I was 17 and I was listening to my answer machine and I had an <clears throat> my first demo signed. I was 17, we sent it to maybe 10 labels on cassette and a label from uh, New York called Direct Drive, which was pretty cool back then. This is 1993. Uh, they called from New York, like really cool, like sounding super cool on the answer machine. Like, yeah, hey man, we want to sign your demo. I almost, I almost flipped right. out. <laughs> Back then it was like, it was harder. Like imagine when you're 17 in 93. I mean, now it's like you got direct access a, a lot more to people. And back then you sent like a demo with post over the Atlantic. It was a lot more complicated and there was, there was a lot less labels. And we were looking up to those people who actually had a label or had something to do with the scene. It was, it was hard to get hold of. And so, so it was a big thing for me, yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations for everything you have done so far, and I hope uh, it will go uh, further and further and further. Thank you very much. It's, it Thank was you so much for having me. You know, no, it I, was I, I hope really I can come back at some point. <laughs> really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was really a great honor to have you tonight uh, in Lyon, uh, which is the second time we, we came here, and all the time when uh, when we, we do something in Lyon, the, the part, the vibe is really strong. Yes. <laughs> uh, so really happy to have you tonight and, and thanks to our partners thank, thank you also for watching uh, and so many uh, likes and comments so thank you uh, very much the partners will come up on the screen and yes I forgot the mystery box I forgot the mystery box <laughs> sorry it's a little gift for you <laughs> and after, hope it's not a puppy <laughs> after, um, <laughs> after more than three years of circle it's the first time we really have a mystery box okay so <laughs> amazing am i supposed to open it yes. on, on camera it won't okay. explode no clowns no, no puppies no clowns. okay cool <laughs> this is interesting yes so it's um, a little gift from uh Luc Dunum museum which is where we are he here in this antique theater of Luc Dunum. Uh -huh. um So it's a key, it's a symbolic key. Oh, wow. Uh, so now you can access this theater whenever you want. <laughs> This is amazing. 
And it's Thank made like so it's, a it's a reproduction of a, of a real of the key real key from, uh, from wow. the old times. This is the best memory, together with the stream, obviously. But obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much, Adam Thanks, man. Thank you. Pleasure. And uh, see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.